Um, so the best fishing cameras for low light. Stick to the Sony A7S series. S often donates, donates, detonates, designates <laughs> low light. So the Sony A7, Panasonic GH5S. If you want a really monster of a low light camera, check out the, I think it's the, no, the Canon 5D Mark, 5D SR, whatever, the one that the astronomers use at night for capturing the Milky Way and stuff. Those are the main three. Sony A7S II. Panasonic GH5S and the Canon SR version of the, they can mount it on, a lot of them will mount it onto a telescope and they record that or they will just do all their astrophotography on that. Let's say I want to do some catfish camping this summer. I would love to get some shots like some astrophotography where you just point the camera up and do some things. You can see the Milky Way, that kind of thing. Micro Four Thirds best for that? No, not by a long shot. There are a couple things I can do because I'm going to use vintage lenses. Those vintage lenses are big lenses that let in a lot of light. And with a focal reducer, it will take that big lens, focus that lens down to fit on that smaller chip, kind of like a telescope. You may ever wonder how a telescope have a lens the size of this book here, and it will focus it the, on an image sensor the size of my thumb. Right? How does it do that? Well, it reduces the focus. Now, all the images are cropped because the, the camera puts out light in a circle, whereas the sensor is rectangular. That, that focus ring of light is just too big for the sensor, right? So you got to focus it down. That's why you use a, what they call a focus reducer. And some people, and I think Metabones calls it a speed booster. Because you call it a focal reducer, people are not going to buy it because they think they're losing something. That's just not true. You call it a speed booster or a turbo adapter like, um, what's the name of the, uh, Mikaton, I think it's a Chinese company that makes these. And Photodeox, they, you, know, you call them, you put turbo in it, people think, oh, oh wow, turbo. It's just marketing. It's a focal reducer. It's just, it's just telescope technology, folks. That'll get more light into a Micro Four Thirds chip, and that'll help, but is it gonna be a true low light beast? No, you're gonna have to spend some money. The cheapest way to get better low light footage is to add more light. Literally just have more camp lights in the dark, future face, but if I'm trying to shoot the stars or the moon, ain't nothing gonna be the full frame. <laughs> what, what's full frame? <laughs> It's all a marketing gimmick. You know, they'll call oh, this is a crop sensor. It makes you sound like you're getting something less. No, this is its own format and it does well for what it is. It's just, <laughs> it has limitations like all formats do, but it's taken from the old days of, of film where you actually, you remember film, actual celluloid that you had to put in the camera? Back in those days, Stills cameras used 35 millimeter film There's, there's no dirt roads anymore for these poor guys to ride their four-wheelers on. They've paved everything. So for your stills cameras, you had 35 millimeter film, which is actually bigger than 35 millimeter. And then you had motion picture film that was 35 millimeters. As far as movies went, you had, to, you had your 35 millimeter film, motion picture film, your standard, which was the gold standard. And then you had 16 millimeter film, which was used by usually TV documentaries. A lot of film school students would use 16 millimeter because it was designed as the cheaper option. And then you had eight millimeter film, which was sort of the consumer version. And then there was somehow Super 35 was in there as well. You also had a Super 16 millimeter film and a Super 8 millimeter film. Thing is, is once we went digital, all those old formats didn't mean anything anymore but they chose to use those sizes because it was a known quantity what they call full frame the size of film that was on an old 35 millimeter still picture camera when you actually look at the size of 35 millimeter motion picture film that's roughly equivalent to what you see in say like this camera which is what is an APS-C sensor this one's just a touch smaller from my perspective APS-C is full frame but once Panasonic and Kodak and Olympus developed the, the four-thirds and micro four-thirds sensors that is a truly digital sensor that has nothing to do with the old 
way of measuring things. If you look at the current Blackmagic cinema camera, the, the, the little one, that thing had a 16 millimeter chip in it. Even though it's a micro four thirds mount, their thinking was, well, this is gonna be a camera that a student would buy, so we're gonna give them the student-like film process, uh, sensor. Well, there's just no need for that now. Now the chips are come in a little dial, like a little disc, and they and the size of the chip just has just 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 how they cut it out on the on the on the wafer. Right? It's, it's just they just it, it's not like the bigger chip was just a bigger chunk of the wafer. The smaller chip is a smaller chunk of the wafer. If you want to know more about the how cameras work, check out a guy called uh, just check out the angry photographer. <laughs> This guy's incredibly knowledgeable. I mean, this guy is just like, he's been doing this. This has been a career for him, these cameras. I'm just talking based on things I've read, based on the experiences of others. He's been doing this because he's been fixing and repairing cameras for a couple of decades or something. If you type in angry photographer, he's the big ball guy with all the tattoos and he's always, <laughs> he kind of laughs like a hyena. Another guy to check out is Caleb over at the DSLR video shooter even though he's shooting on mirrorless. <laughs> he's actually shooting on cinema camera. Back to low light. If you're gonna go a low light condition, you can use these cameras for low light, but you probably wanna get something big, you know, probably get an APS-C, you know, again, that's Fuji. You know, it's probably some of the Canons, probably some of the Sonys. That's all I got.